guys, welcome back to our channel. Today, I'll be teaching you how you'll be able to draw your floor plan using AutoCAD. I assume some of you might not have any experience with AutoCAD as you're watching this video. But don't worry, I will touch on the basic commands in this video so you can start drawing your own floor plans. So, what is AutoCAD? It stands for Computer Aided Design. This software is used for designing and drafting. It allows a user to conceptualize ideas, product designs, and drawings to the required level of technical accuracy, perform rapid design calculations, and simulations in the field of manufacturing industries. Before we get started, I'm using the AutoCAD 2021, but any version will work for today's how-tos. If you already know how to use the basic tools of AutoCAD, feel free to skip the first few parts of this video since I'll be going through the basic commands first. For now, get your AutoCAD file open and let's get started! Here are some basic AutoCAD commands. L stands for line, the very basic command to draw a line. Alternatively, you can type L at the command bar. Polyline is the automatic line connector. When you draw a shape, all its points are connected, compared to using the line command where each line is a separate variable. C is to draw a circle. Just click and drag depending on how big or small you want your circle to be. Rec is for drawing a rectangle. You can also just click and drag to adjust the size of the rectangle. This is the three-point arc command. It is used to create an arc in AutoCAD. First click is the starting point of the arc. The second click is for the curve of the arc. And the third click is the end point of the arc. You can adjust the width of the arc by adjusting the three points accordingly. CO is the command to copy any shape drawn on the workspace. SC is the command used to change the scaling of the selected objects. These are some of the basic commands we will use in today's video. You can attempt to practice these commands first if you are still unfamiliar with them. Otherwise, let's move on to making your floor plan. The first thing that we need to do is to make sure that we have the image of the floor plan we want to replicate open. This is to ensure that it's always visible and so we can easily refer to it as and when we need to. There are different ways to do this. The easiest way is if you have two monitors. You can simply open that picture in your second monitor so it's always visible while you draw. If you don't have a second monitor, we can just bring the picture inside our canvas in AutoCAD. For today, we will be doing the latter so you can see both the original floor plan and our drawn floor plan on the same screen. We are going to proceed to insert that reference picture by clicking on the Insert tab on the ribbon and then on the Attach button on the reference section. What I'm going to do is to simply click anywhere I want my picture to be inserted. Now that you have the floor plan inserted in like this, you can start drawing at the side. A quick tip is to keep the ortho mode on most of the time. Ortho mode is used when you specify an angle or a distance by means of two points using a pointing device. In ortho mode, cursor movement is constrained to the horizontal or vertical direction. For a start, always draw the exterior walls first, then followed by the interior. You eventually come to this stage where all your exterior walls have already been built up. From here, you will need to shade some of the walls. I will be drawing the boundaries using the Hatch tool. To use it, first, search the Hatch command at the command bar. Click it and hover over the area you want to shade. Usually, Walls that are highlighted or shaded are structural walls that cannot be hacked or demolished. You can change the highlight pattern at the toolbar. You can use the line, rec, or the three-point arc to outline the walls accordingly. The hatch tool can only be used on closed shapes, such as this. 
that the shaded columns, exterior walls, and interior walls are done, we can proceed on to the doors. Ensure that you create an opening at certain walls. These openings are important for knowing where your doors will be located at. It should look something like this. Now that the floor plan layout is done, we can proceed on plotting your furniture in. But first, you'll need to have their measurements ready. If you found the furniture online, it will be easy to find their dimensions. But, if you prefer those from the malls, remember to measure them and note them down somewhere so you can plot them into your floor plan here. Note down the furniture that you'd like to include in your home so you'll have a checklist to look back into during the process. By having their proper dimensions, your furniture plan will be more precise as compared to just estimating. The next step would be changing the line types. There are two lines here which are supposed to be the top and bottom cabinets in the kitchen. But how do we differentiate the two different types of cabinets? Here, let me show you. What I do is that the top cabinet will be dotted lines. That way, you can easily differentiate the two and not end up confusing the lines as mistakes. To change the solid line to a dotted line, click the line type button. Click others and load the lines. You will see a variety of line types you can choose from. From there, you can choose whichever line you prefer. You can also scale the lines to make them more noticeable. To do this, set global scale factor from 1.0 to 5.0. This scale determines how big the dotted lines are going to be. Since we're going on a bigger scale, it is best to increase the size of this so we can see the dotted lines and spacings clearly. The last and final step would be labeling the furniture and the rooms in your floor plan. When dealing with a bigger scale, sometimes when you add your text, they will end up looking very tiny. That's because your text is set as the default size. But not to worry, you can easily scale it up to suit whatever scale you are plotting against. First, highlight the area you typed on. Press the scale button, and in your command bar, type in the size you want. I will be going for 30. This is depending on the scale of your plan. Your scale size may differ from mine. And from there, you can zoom in to scale it up. Repeat the same steps to label the furniture. Once you have done plotting the furniture or fabrication, label each room according to the floor plan. If you are worried that your text might get lost after you press enter, just highlight the area you are plotting the text and no matter how small the scale your text is, it will definitely be caught in the highlight. Labels are valuable because they immediately convey information about the room. And there you have it! Now everyone can easily understand and differentiate the different components of your drawing. Your final working plan should look something like this. Your very own furniture layout floor plan, made entirely through AutoCAD. This may take you a lot of practice, but with time, I'm sure you can easily master this. We hope you enjoyed this video and remember to comment down below to let us know how you feel about it and what else you would like to learn next. Do subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you'll be notified when we'll post our next lesson. Thank you for watching. Bye!